Well, good evening. Praise the Lord. This is the day the Lord has made. We will rejoice and we will be glad in it. This is Pastor Jonathan Knight. Welcome to Going From This Place. I want to start out by saying Happy New Year 2023 to every one of you. This is our first Going From This Place of the New Year 2023. We're grateful unto God for what he is doing, what he has done, and what he's going to do in, through, and around our life. We are grateful that we have made it to another year, and we are thankful that he is doing what he is doing for our life. My heart's desire is that you, as well as your family, that you're doing well and that you're safe and that you're planning on 2023 to be one of the greatest years of your life. One of the things that we decreed and declared, God spoke to me, we've already spoken to the church by which I pastor, is that we believe that 2023 is the year of divine upgrade, that God is literally going to take every area of our life to another level so we can have a life that is fulfilled, whole, happy, and a life that's successful in him and for those we love. And I'm getting ready to go into our initial prayer tonight, and then I'm going to start out, I believe, a crucial series for the new year that we're believing that God is going to do great things. Father, we thank you for your love. We thank you for your mercy. We are grateful for your grace. Thank you for allowing us to see another year. Let your anointing and your word, O oh God, direct us on this evening. Holy Spirit, teach us, lead us, guide us, O oh God, by your word. We ask you to bless every family, every heart. Many this year are grieving. Many hearts are heavy. The circumstances and situations around our lives that we need your guidance. We need your peace and we need your direction. God, tonight, we fully understand that as long as we have you, as long as we have you in our life, we can grow, learn, excel, and advance from any place in life. We ask you to bless us. We ask you to cover us, teach us with wisdom. In Jesus' name we pray, amen and amen. I am grateful unto God tonight, and again, we are thankful unto God tonight. I'm just getting ready to jump right into this new series that we're launching on tonight, 2023, from growing from this place. Growing from this place is simply established with the purpose of this in mind. No matter what place we are in, what place we have been, what situation, what circumstance that we have to deal with, and even some things in life that was unscheduled and even blindsided, the purpose of this call tonight is to fully let you know and to encourage you And God, to encourage us that no matter where we are, we can grow from that place and we can still win because we decree and we declare you are a winner. We're going to take our text from the book of Ecclesiastes, the third chapter. We're going to deal with the subject that the Lord dealt with me about a week and a half ago to start out with this in the new year. I believe that laying the foundation is important. I believe that understanding that the timing of God is crucial so that we can be effective. So we simply don't want to be able to waste energy and or time. I've concluded that this is the year that we need to be on target. This is the year by which we need to be able to not find ourselves moving into the cycles of wasted time. And that's what we're going to start out with tonight, Ecclesiastes, the third chapter. We're going to start reading from verse 1 through verse 8, and then I'll give you our subject for this next series. To everything, there is a season and a time to every purpose under the heaven. I'm going to read the first verse again. To everything, there is a season and a time to every purpose under the heaven. Time to be born, a time to die, a time to plant, and a time to pluck up that which is planted. Time to kill, a time to heal, a time to break down, and a time to build up, a time to weep, and a time to laugh. A time to mourn and a time to dance. 
a time to cast away stones and a time to gather stones together, a time to embrace and a time to refrain from embracing, a time to get and a time to lose, a time to keep and a time to cast away, a time to win and a time to sow, a time to keep silence and a time to speak, a time to love, time to hate, time of war, and a time of peace. I'm going back to verse 1, and we start this series. To everything, there is a season and a time to every purpose under the heaven. A series by which we're going to stick with as a subject matter or thought is mastering the purpose of time. Mastering the purpose of time. I think that every one of us at some point in our life, and perhaps even right now, did not handle or perhaps are not handling time wisely and or effectively. A few questions I want to ask you. What do you do with your time? And is your time used wisely? How many emergency situations have we created for ourselves simply because we did not handle time wisely? How many times that procrastination or I'll get around to it or I'll deal with it later? And we treated time as if though in times it's always going to be there. But time has a purpose. Time has an objective. Time has a purpose. And the purpose of time, time has to keep moving forward. Time waits on no one. Second thing I want to ask you is this. Who or what takes up your time? Who gets the most of your time? Who perhaps doesn't get enough of your time? Because time is one of the most precious and valuable gifts on earth. What are the benefits of you having time? What's the manifestation that you handle time correctly in your life? What does the harvest of time bring you? Or is there no desired results or wanted seasons and or reflections? Time is the thing God gives everyone. So I got to learn how, and when I start thinking about this subject, I have to learn how to master the purpose of time, or time can either be a benefit, or in some cases, time can appear to be an enemy. Last question. What do you have to show for the time that God gives you? Because your purpose is tied to your time. I looked at this and I thought about something. Most times in life, when we think of time, we look at time defined by the seconds and the minutes hours in the day. But let me give you a definition of time. Time is the indefinite continued process of existence and events. Time deals with the past, the present, and the future all at the same time. 
time is regarded as a whole measured in hours and minutes. It's measured or measurable period by which action or conditions exist or continues. It's a period that something occurs. Time. There is a season and a time to every purpose under the heaven. God gives us time. Unfortunately, this week, I had some friends and and relatives uh, that have run out of time. So time keeps the obligation to keep moving. The purpose of time in our life is that God gives us time. Time gives us opportunity. But we have to know how to handle it. See, this day, I'm already amazed how 2023 seems to be saying January is saying to February, I have to keep moving because I have a purpose to give us the space to accomplish. Unfortunately, the mystery of time is this is we just don't know how much we have. But we can count on this. Time is going to keep moving. If I can be transparent with you, and I will, there are some times when I look back over my life and I've reflected over my life on many occasions, and I've had to come to the conclusion that if I knew then what I know now, I would have tried to master the purpose of time. You might get another opportunity, but the opportunity that you might get because of time is not the same opportunity that has already moved on from that time. In other words, that's the past. So many times we take time for granted. So many times we take one another for granted because the truth of the matter is whether we want to think it or reflect on it. Time is going to keep moving. Time is not going to pause when you pause. Time is not going to be lazy when we're not, when we're lazy. Time is not going to stop when we stop. Time is not going to sleep when we sleep. Time is not going to eat when we eat. Time has a purpose. Time has a purpose in our life. No matter what happens in life, everything that I have to deal with operates in time. It is indefinite, but it also is consistent. And one of the things I want you to do this year and one of the things that I plan to do this year to another whole level is time must be handled right because it's an opportunity. But yet, it's a privilege to have it, but we have to handle it right. This is a year where your goals can't just be on a piece of paper, written down, that you look at. This is the year to where I said this on our watch night service. There's a reason why we're still here. There's a reason why I'm still here. And what happens with so many people, they make their New Year's resolutions. And the Lord said to me, some of the reason why we are still here is not because he wants to do something new. He wants you to finish something old that you didn't complete. There's a reason why God gave us an opportunity to live in 2023. It's because 2022 was 365 days, 24 hours a day, seven days a week that all of us live. Every one of us on this call tonight lived every day in 2022. But every one of us that lived in 2022 had things and we had time. And yet we're still striving to accomplish some things. And we haven't mastered it because most people don't take 
time seriously because they don't understand the purpose of time. God gives us time so our life can be fulfilled. God gives us time so we can enjoy some of the things of life. God gives us time, and he set the time for us to be on this earth and how we view time and how we think about time and how we allow people to waste our time, and how we become sometimes in our own emotional fatigue. We become enemies of our time because we allow too much time to go by watching the lives of others who are not mastering time, living like they have an opportunity to live this way for the rest of their life when absolutely today, Unfortunately, that we're living and we're dying at the same time. Today, we had one more day to live. And today, because of time, we had one less day to live. And if you start mastering the purpose of time, you'll fully begin to understand that time must be valued. Relationships must be valued. Goals, purpose, and the will of God in your life must be valued. A truth of reality in my life right now is that, hey, J.L. McKnight, whether you want to admit it or not, bro, you're getting older and you have less time. And even though the grace of God can give us more time, we still don't know how much time we have. Therefore, we have to ask and consult God and fully understand that there's a time to be born. We are already alive. That's happened. There's a time to die. It's already scheduled. There's a time to plant. What are you planning in life? Are you planning venom or are you planning victory? Are you sowing or are you just trying to reap? Time to plant. It's a time to pluck up that which is planted. It's a time to kill. Sometimes people misunderstand that part. There are some things that live in our life. It's time for some people right now, you got to kill that unforgiveness. You got to kill that venom. You got to kill that hatred. You got to kill those things that have been wasting your time, the cycle of laziness. And in many cases, unfortunately, you have to kill the associations that allow you to not be productive in time. It's a time to heal. It's a time to break down. It's a time to build up. And I wrote down some things about time that if you look at your life, and maybe I'm the only one, even though I know I'm not, time will bring regrets if you reflect on the fact that some things that we perhaps thought might be a good thing, but if we look at it closely, we could have just said, you know what, that was a waste of time. Even though you might have learned some things, even though you might have experienced some things, truth of the matter is we have not mastered what time really does. What are you going to do tomorrow? What are you going to do for the rest of the evening? What are you planning to be or to become? How are you trying to advance your life to be better? Or how are you planning to make someone else's life better? Is it just about you? Do you spend all your time trying to get people to acknowledge you, to think well of you, how do you spend your time and who are you spending your time for? How much time do you acknowledge God as to what to do on a daily basis? How many connections have you prayed about that's in your life? This is really thought-provoking tonight. How much time do you look at social media for hours watching other people's lives? watching people that are trying to influence you to do what they want you to do, and all they want is you, in many cases, to 
to give your time towards their time. But really, they don't consider your time. How many, how many hours do you spend watching the television? How much time do you give um, just wasting? I got some famous quotes that I'm going to deal with in a moment, but there's something that I, this morning when I was writing this out, I broke down the word time. And here's what the Lord gave me. And God spoke this so clearly. The T in time, time is telling how many situations you couldn't understand the purpose of time because you were not willing to see what time was trying to tell you. Time is telling. It's revealing. Sometimes you rush things. Sometimes we call people friends and don't even know if they understand loyalty. See, everybody has a comment, but everybody don't have a commitment. Time. So many lives on social media. It's ridiculous how many lives on social media. In other words, sharing like friends. Oh, we friends on Facebook. That don't mean nothing. When I say nothing, nothing. You accept people as, fr as friends and don't even know them. That's why many relationships fail. Many relationships fail because we don't try to take out time. Time is telling. Unfortunately, time reveals. So the T time is telling. I, time is identification. Sometimes people will put the front in front of you or in front of them because they don't want to really cause you to know what it's telling. If you hang around long enough, time will identify who you really are, whether your heart is right, whether your intent is right, whether your motive is right. And sometimes we're not perfect, and we make mistakes. All of us do. We have flaws, and we have shortcomings. But if you keep living, it's easy to say you love God. It's easy to say God is good when he's done what you want him to do. But time becomes identification. When sometimes God won't move when you want him to. Sometimes God won't answer when you want him to. And your love for God, your love for people, your love for one another. Because in most cases, in a lot of cases in life, you're only as good as someone next expectation. But see, time is identification. Time is, are you loyal when things perhaps don't go your way? Time will reveal who you really are. You might be misunderstood, but over a period of time, if your heart means right, it will be identified. T is telling. I is identification. And the M in time, time is manifestation. Time will reveal your hard work. It might not be revealed right away. Time is manifestation of your faith. When you believe that God's going to do something for you, it might not happen the first week. It might not happen the first month. It might not happen the first year. But time will manifest your relationship with God. Time will manifest your care for someone because something's going to come up and time's going to reveal in good times, in hard times, in not so good times, in bad times. Time is manifestation. Time reveals what you believe. See, time will give you a space to cause you to either quit or keep going. Time 
will either break you or make you. Time is a privilege and an opportunity for God to find out which he already knows. Do you really trust him? See, time will allow you to live to where it'll manifest whether you're going to trust God or wait on God. Or you're going to take matters in your own time, your own hand. Time will not create resentment and jealousy when someone else seems to be blessed more than you. Here's one thing I've learned that I don't allow time to do. Switch me from what I believe. Because everything sparkling, everything shining, everything that looks prosperous, every direction that the crowd go in, everything trending, everything popular, sooner or later, time will reveal. Billions of dollars. I'm just thinking about the last, you know, crypto um, fraud situation. F, what was it, FTS? Everybody was jumping on the bandwagon. And come to find out, time manifested that this is not really what it is. And really, that's why we stick with the word of God. That's why we seek God. That's why we acknowledge God. Because time becomes manifestation. Time has a purpose, and we have to understand that to everything, there's a time and a season, but we got to learn how to trust God with the principles. We got to learn how to want to walk in the will of God, and we want what God wants, and we want who God wants for us, and we ultimately want to please him because we seek ye first the kingdom of God, his righteousness, and his will is more important and how I feel. His will is more important than how I feel. Here's what I found out about God. If you trust him, and if you prove to him that his way is the ultimate way, rather than trying to be a people pleaser, a crowd follower, you got to understand Time tells on you about your faith, about what you really believe. I don't have to badmouth you, hurt you, or fight you to win in life. Time will reveal, do you really believe God is for you? Because if you believe God is for you, it doesn't matter who's against you. Why? Because time has a purpose to reveal who's around you. And sometimes there can be a hard and painful lessons, disappointment, sometimes anger, brokenness. Sometimes people are not just broken. Sometimes they are literally shattered. And it was all revealed in time. But even in your brokenness, God will give you time to let you walk down the road of repair and restoration because it's not the will of God for time to be your enemy. The purpose of time is for you to understand what God's plans are for your life. And last but certainly not least, the E in time. Time is everlasting. Time is eternal. It never stops. And that's one of the things I love about God. He so wants to be with us. He so loved us. And he so loves us that he gave his only begotten son that if we accept Jesus as our Lord and our Savior, he gives us the ability to master time to where we can live and be with God forever. There are some quotes that I want to share with you, maybe three tonight. Uh, perhaps every, um, the ending of every going from this place, I'll share a few quotes. 
Pope John Paul II said this, the future starts today, not tomorrow. Did you do something today to start your future for something greater? Future, a lot of people makes future like, well, you know, next month, next year, I'm going to get a house before the end of the year. No. Your future starts today, not tomorrow. That's what Joe, John Paul, Pope John Paul II says. Steve Jobs, we know his story. The most precious resource we all have is time. Something that John F. Kennedy said, President John F. Kennedy, I love this quote, and I'll perhaps end with this one for tonight. We must use time as a tool, not a couch. <laughs> We must use time as a tool. In other words, something that works for us to accomplish what we really want to have. But you can't treat time like it's a couch. You can't just sit on time because time has a purpose to keep moving, to keep revealing, and to keep manifesting. This is the year that I want to motivate every one of us don't take anything to, for granted. Don't take people for granted. Don't take God for granted. And definitely don't take time for granted. Because we are three hours and 30, or three hours and 26 minutes away from a day that we never will see again. And when these three hours go by, this day becomes the past. And at 12 midnight tonight, we start living in the present. But our future starts right now. Tomorrow, if God's gracious enough to allow all of us to live, I want you to rethink some things, and that is, how do I view time? Is time for me, or do I not perhaps handle it right to where time becomes an enemy? I'm so grateful tonight that I feel like somebody got some motivation. I know I am. I'm, I'm motivated. So many times people try to waste time to get people to like them or to accept them or to believe in them. Well, first of all, if you believe in God, there's nothing that you can't do. Philippians 4 and 13 says, I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me. And then you have to make people respect your time. They cannot manage your time when they're not handling their time correctly. But here's what we're going to do. We're going to go to Proverbs 3. In all our ways, we're going to trust in the Lord and lean not to our own understanding. All our ways, we're going to acknowledge him so he can direct our path. Let's all decide tonight that we're going to treat time like a tool and not a couch. Father, we thank you for your love. We thank you for your mercy. We thank you for your grace, for you're God, you're good, and you're worthy to be praised. There is nobody like you in all the earth. We're thankful unto you, God, for blessing us in time. We are grateful. We're thankful. And, God, we repent for not handling time the right way. And many times we have been negligent in how we've handled time. But tonight, we're standing on your word. We're standing on your will. Teach us how to be better. Teach us how to be wiser. And teach us how to value the time. That really is the opportunity for us to perform your will. Tonight, 
We totally give our life to you. Without you, we are nothing, but through you, we can do all things. We love you. We praise your holy name. That is done in Jesus' name. Amen. May God bless you. May God bless your family. Be safe. Be wise. And learn how to master time. God bless this Pastor John. Good night. Thank you for tuning in to going from this place. God bless.